Hello, everybody. My name is Joel Vargis, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the major reforms our government has taken in the agricultural sector, which has a huge stake on the stakeholders in that sector, which are the farmers. We all know what we are talking about, which are the farm laws that has been recently introduced by the government. Historically, farmers who sell their produce to Mandi merchants at agricultural produce market committees, which are known as the APMCs, still receive informal white slips with the transaction amount scribbled on them, making the record non-transparent. According to our government, the purpose of the new farm laws is to end the historic exploitation of farmers at the APMC markets and free them from the clutches of the middlemen. But our farmers do not think so, and they think that they will be at the mercy of the corporates once these farm laws are put into place. But today, let's look at this, these farm laws with an apolitical view and from a completely economic perspective. So a few points from an economic view are as follows. Multiple markets and competition which exist in the industry. Allowing buyers outside APMC Mondays promotes competition and halts exploitation. At present, while consumers are paying higher price, farmers are still receiving low returns due to inefficiencies and imperfections. Thus, the market's right is crucial through the new laws. Unified market platform, UP, UP in Karnataka, result in increase of prices by 38%. This implies that current market prices are depressed by 38% due to lack of adequate competition. Opening up the markets, and push the APMCs to offer competitive prices. Competition in procurement and distribution cost can also reduce to 15% as per government reports. Second, let's look at the inefficiencies in APMCs. APMCs still don't issue formal receipts which are supposed to mention the price, quantity, or quality of the produce. Further, due to interlocked markets, farmers are forced to sell those middle have borrow, who they have borrowed money from, cutting off a vicious cycle of exploitation in times of distress. Buyers make a large income from informal lending. Such illegal fed and unfair deductions, undercover sales, cartels, and collusions at APMCs have continued denying remunerative access to farmers. Next, widen markets benefits of farmers. Due to green revolution technology, supply has increased is limited to APMCs for handling. This causes the prices to be capped at a lower value. Permission to buy or sell outside APMCs will benefit farmers by creating new supply or value chain. Next is the infringement of rights. Farmers' right to sell their produce to whoever, wherever, whenever, and in whichever quantity cannot be infringed upon. The elasticity of price transmission between that at APMCs and fragment prices which are market value minus selling cost is impressive. Thus, buyers outside APMC will have to compete with APMC prices and vice versa to attract farmers' produce. Next, there is a contract farming. Contract farming enabled farmers to produce at a predetermined price. When the market price is above contractual price, farmers have the liberty to sell at the higher price. Small farmers have benefited multiple large farmers contract farming as income derived per acre was the highest for small farmers. Also, the agricultural markets starved of three C's. Agricultural, the three C's are capital, competition, and commitment. Capital injection postpones operation of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Gross private capital formation in agriculture is 75%. Investment in marketing infrastructure Processing logistic benefits society where private sector has potential. This will, will is crucial, and hence the union government should not kill the three laws. New provisions of Essential Commodities Act enable scale economies in agricultural marketing attract private sector investment. So, looking at all these and looking at the sta state, for example, Bihar. Uh, has already brought about reforms in the agricultural laws. They have a better performance in the sector, but nobody knows how it will turn out in the long run 
where if the farmers are correct or the, if the government is correct on their views. So these, these are the points from an economic perspective at the looking at the farm laws. Thank you.